Hi, welcome to another edition of Hand Lay Tracks and 3D Printed Trains with Socrates. Today we're going to take a look at a 3D printed rail roller. I designed and made a 3D printed rail roller so I could create curved tracks for a curved section of tracks. And you need to curve the rail as close to the desired radius and shape as possible so as to not induce a stress into the fixture once it's soldered in place. And to do this, a rear roller is the easiest way to do it. With two fixed bearings and a movable bearing in the middle, you can simply adjust the movable bearing to create the proper radius, and then you push the rail through the roller. Don't pull it ever, you just push it through, back and forth a few times until you develop the proper radius that you, that you want. If you make too tight of a radius, you can just back it out slightly, and you can push it through the other direction, and you can straighten it back if you need to. Basically I'm starting with a couple straight rails. This is N-Scale Code 55 uh, the railing and this is the first time I was using it so I thought I'd be a little cautious. You don't pull the rail, you only push it because if you pull it you'll mess up the bend. So I was pushing it one way through it and then I push it back the other way and then I was slowly tightening up the, bulb, the bearing in the middle. I have a number 12 inch radius jig in front of me as well as a 10 inch radius. My goal is the 10 inch but I thought I'd go into it again a little slowly. Hadn't bent a rail before. I figured I'd make sure this thing worked well. And it was a brand new thing I had just built myself. 3D printed this. The design is out there. It's pretty, pretty simple concept. Two fixed bearings and a middle bearing in the middle that moves back and forth. Again just checking to make sure how the arc was. Uh, it goes very slow but then at some point all of a sudden it overbends and that's not a problem you can then unbend it just as easily as you bent it and so I each time I tightened it up a little more and more slipped it through and then you can see just like that it went from underbent to almost exactly a 12 inch radius and that was uh, getting very close and it was it was pretty close to the 10 inch Again, you don't want it forced when you put it into the jig and you end up soldering in place. You don't want the rail to be under stress because over time it will eventually break the solder joints. So I'm getting really close with this rail. It's almost in, so I don't, I don't think I tightened it up anymore at the very least. If you're at that close, and that's almost a perfect rail. Didn't take very long whatsoever. So now I figured, well, the, the, the device was set up at the proper distance. And it should go quickly in to the right length. So I just went back and forth once. And uh, it's actually tighter than the 12 inch. It's almost precise. So in that regard, that time, the rail worked perfectly. Now the second time I did it after that, uh, I got a rail that was a bit too tight. But then I just readjusted it and it worked very well. So in the end, the rail roller worked very, very well. I thought it was an effective way to make beautifully curved uh, rails and the curved tracks themselves. They turned out quite well as well. You can see that in a, uh, another video. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you want a rail roller yourself, I'll probably put a couple up for Etsy and maybe the design as well. And you can check that on my Etsy page and we'll make some more designs in the future. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and we'll see you on the tracks. I'm not moving this time, I'm just going to sit here.